And have you found then in, in your research, because I guess like maybe the biggest, and this might be a misconception or it's like a perception that a lot of us have is nurture in nature, it's 50-50. From what I've heard and learned, it's almost like, it feels like it's like 80% nurture, 20% nature. Do you think yeah, that's- I think I know where the confusion is because academically, because you know, there's an academic answer to over the research, there is an exact percentage. And sure. academically, the correct answer to write in your university essay is it's 50-50. Right. It is 50% environment and it is 50% genetics that define your outcomes as an adult. We can attribute 50% of to them to your genes, the stuff that was there, um, and we can attribute 50% to the environment. But you have to put two big butts on that. One is that that's on average. That that's a hundred people, not one person. Sure. You might have been, as an individual, only um, twenty percent established when you were here, and eighty percent affected by the environment. Your your particular number might be twenty eighty, or twenty percent is affected by genes, and eighty percent affected by the environment. So the rest of the family probably describe you psychologically as a new soul because you're very affected by the environment. Whereas, say, your brother might have been eighty percent here in his genes already, and the environment's mm. only affected him twenty percent. Everyone's got their own number, but the overall average over a population of 100 is 50-50. Yeah, that doesn't true. mean you as an individual are 50-50. Everyone's, everyone's their own little mix of how much they are. Right, it's like macro yeah. and genes, micro, yeah. Yeah, genes don't really work in that nice, convenient, mathematical way that our parents thought they did. Just because your mother's a Smith and your father's a Jones doesn't really mean you're 50-50, Smith and Jones. Mm -hmm. You might have ended up getting all of your genes, 80% of your genes from the Smith side. Yeah, and actually, eighty percent Smith and twenty percent Jones. Yeah, um, okay. but yeah, it's fifty-fifty on average. Right. So, yeah. Okay, and I want to I want to delve a bit more into the um in into the nurture and nature thing. And I I was yeah I'm quite fascinated by I so just psychopathy, right? Uh, is that the the umbrella that I feel like that's somewhat of like an umbrella term for like a uh, antisocial behavior, a lack of empathy. Uh, yep. uh would, would that be correct that would be correct yeah okay and so does that mean that uh those factors are your your predisposition you're born to them or is that really just a factor of your environment because if the brain's being molded to the environment that you have i would yep. say a lack of empathy is probably one of those things that it molds to or is it something that's like predisposition yes. genetic it is always a combination of both right so um it's about having the genetic predisposition and then having that activated by having an abusive environment. Then you've got the psychopath. Because if you've got it so strong in your genes to be empathetic, then you can be raised abusively, but you're still empathetic because it's just so right. strong in your genes. Um, you could, yeah. So it's always a combination of the two of them. When you get a psychopath, it's, yeah, there had to be a genetic predisposition. But if that genetic predisposition was there, lots of people have that genetic predisposition and don't become psychopaths mm -hmm. or don't develop any sort of psychopathy because they're they've been nurtured in a loving environment in the early years. And that puts the structures in the brain. The genes didn't need to put them in place. The early environment did. It's when you get the perfect storm of the genes aren't going to put them in place. And that's, that can just come from intergenerational poverty. Or the literature called the warrior gene. It's hard to hang it on. Māori have this warrior gene. It's not really a Māori gene. It's an intergenerational poverty gene. Mm -hmm. every, every race that has intergenerational poverty ends out losing sort of this resilience and having this predisposition towards violence and negative outcomes that they call the warrior gene. But it's really intergenerational poverty. But what I'm saying is if you've got that warrior gene and then you go into a loving home, it's not really a warrior gene. If you've got that lack of resilience genes, then you go into a loving home, you still get it anyway. Sure. So it's always a combination of both. I think what you said earlier about you felt like it was 80% nurture. Mm. I think that's because the 50% genes we can't really influence. So we don't tend to focus on that very much. We focus on the other 50% of the nurture that we can influence. So 80% of what you hear about is about the nurture. But yeah, it is sort of overall 50-50. It's interesting that you talk about um, um, the resilience. Uh, and, and I don't know if you can elaborate on that, but like with, with poverty, you were saying that there's like a, a lesson, uh, a, a lower level of resilience. But the way that I see it as well is like we have um, this uh, somewhat, at least people that I know who have, are very affluent, you know, and they have a very easy upbringing, some of the lowest levels of resilience I've ever seen. And is right. it, is there like a, is there like a perfect middle ground? Is it like things get too easy? You have no resilience. Things get too hard. No, no you would think so. That's where common sense leads us astray. 
because mm-hmm. now it's very clear from a research point of view, the more resiliency factors you've got, the better off you are. There's not like some perfect amount of abuse. Um, like Just like in the um, smacking literature, there's not some perfect amount to smack the kid. As soon as you smack them once, you get all the negative outcomes. Right. Um, it's, kind of, it's kind of the same thing. It's, um, so what you're seeing, when you see some people come from the most affluent upbringings and stuff, and then they have no resilience, that is not the norm. That's the exception to the rule. The vast majority of people that come from really affluent upbringings had all the things that are associated with affluence like at-home parents available grandparents and um they usually the majority of them grow up to be have lower statistics for mental health and institutionalization and stuff but it is absolutely possible when you know people from affluent backgrounds that their mother was still postnatally depressed in the first year of their life and because she was rich and had a flash house and um, wanted to keep up appearances, didn't tell anybody, and that baby got hardly interacted with in the first year of life. No one knows that. They all think he's had a wonderful childhood because he's gone to private schools and had all of the trimmings of affluence, but actually his structures weren't put in. He's got an attachment disorder from the first year of his life, um, and so he grows up to be incredibly non-resilient. That's not because he was too spoiled. It's because he wasn't attached to or spoken to enough in the first year of life. You, know, you right. don't get negative outcomes from being too loved. There is no, it is biologically, neurologically impossible to overlove someone. Right, right. Um, I, I, it's, to me, that just flies so much in the face of like, uh, once you get in, engaged in some kind of hardship, though, and you're just not accustomed to that hardship, and then you just kind of crumble yes. in front of that. Is that? I think that's, that's the thing that we call in the literature tolerable stress versus toxic stress. Can if you your expand parents on that? Di- if your parents divorce, that's trauma for you. But you've got a you've got a really close relationship with your grandparents. You've got an uncle you're particularly close to, and your parents um, stay talking to each other and keep the lines of communication open because you're really concerned about your kids' well-being. That becomes tolerable stress. You become stronger from it because mm. you went through a stressful event. But the stress, because you had supports in place, become tolerable stress. You're able to manage. Equally, your parents could get divorced. You don't have grandparents living in that region. You don't have any other close relationships. Your parents are too consumed in their own problems to think much about you, really, and are at each other's throats every minute of the day. And you just become more and more depressed and more and more withdrawn. Now that stress is toxic stress. Um, And I think what you're getting to is that sometimes people come from such privileged lifestyles. They've never developed any resilience because they've never even dealt with tolerable stress. And that is a bad thing. Um, but it doesn't mean that anybody should deal with toxic stress. Right. Um, yeah. But um, yeah, but life is stressful. Even the most affluent people still have grandparents die and they still don't come first. And, you know, sure. being affluent and having that stuff doesn't shield you from. Trauma. No, no exactly. it's, all compa- it's all comparative, isn't it? Yeah. I feel like one of the biggest things when it comes to the affluence is just the alleviating of uh, alleviating of certain types of worry. You know, and I think, yep. you know, you can see that with like the statistics as far as, uh, you know, if you earn, I think it's like above $80,000, your kind of happiness yeah. kind of flatlines to a certain degree, you know, and then the, right. the money just kind of gets gets removed. Thank you for watching that clip. If you enjoyed it, make sure you hit that subscribe button on the left. And if you want to watch the full episode, hit the square on the bottom. To watch another small clip, go ahead and hit that square on top. And if you just want to listen to the full episode but don't have time to watch it, you can find this podcast wherever podcasts are listened to. Thanks. Bye.